Today's show is brought to you by StickerU.com. Brand your brew with StickerU. StickerU's online design editor allows you to upload and design your own custom, professional-grade craft brew labels in any shape, any size, and any quantity. Sticker U. Make what matters stick. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Hello and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, visit homebrewhappyhour.com, the brand new homebrewhappyhour.com, and click on the submitted question link at the top of the page, or you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Steubing. Today I am joined by the handsome director of operations at cmbecker.com. I know... You're going to embrace it one day. You're always going to get that reaction. I know. You. You're too humble. See, I, I, she doesn't like that. I would kill to be called handsome. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I would be killed. Uh, or, or, I would be killed. I would kill to be called handsome. Uh, my do- I have to beg my daughters to tell me they love me. No, I'm kidding. That- <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to tell you your posts. I don't know if I've seen a cute or little girl's group of girls in yours. They're adorable. That picture that you sent Todd in the pool. Your youngest one when yeah. you went on vacation, that was adorable. They're cute. They're all right. Beyond words, Emily they're, will take that too. Yeah, they're, they're all right, man. Uh, I like them enough. Uh, this is the homebrew happy hour. We do take your questions. Uh, we, I thought this week was going to be all three of us. I thought, oh man, it's going to be great. I'm going to play that reunited song like I've done before in the past. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, things took a turn for for the awkwardly worse. Um, I, 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 it's I don't want people to be too worried but the same breath i always wonder how much i should joke about it todd had like this devastating pinched nerve in, in injury yeah. what do you call is it an injury what do you, yeah, I don't it's, know. A, it, it's a bulging disc in his neck so he as always overdid it working this last weekend and he came in monday and said that he just couldn't he couldn't sleep actually had to go to the emergency room and get some medication because it was just unbearable anybody that's had a bulging disc pushing on nerves can can attest to it's it's probably one of the most uncomfortable things you can go through other than childbirth right and even then I, when my wife was giving birth to all three of my kids i made her know like if i had injury you know oh i stumped my toe i understand <laughs> what you feel oh. uh she didn't find it's, it it's funny how that's always the measure <laughs> doesn't matter what happens it's all about other than childbirth <laughs> exactly it really is the, it is uh, the yeah to digress real quick what the female body does during childbirth is nothing short of a miracle and i'm makes me grateful that i'm a man to be quite yeah, honest me too. if i was yeah, a woman totally if i was it. a woman i'd never get pregnant i'm sorry yeah, i just yeah. wouldn't uh but yeah todd the pinched or pardon me the bulging disc you were an emt uh mm-hmm. like what I don't even know. Like, this isn't a medical show, but is that something that can be easily resolved, or is that something he lives with? No, now? no, that that has to be. Uh, we just have to that, try to make him comfortable, and the doctor has to medicate it. I mean, sometimes it, it it's very difficult to even medicate. You know, it it takes some pretty serious hardcore medication to make those pains go away. So it's like surgery in Todd's future. Well. I mean, short of an epidural, I've heard people having epidurals just to to alleviate the pain. Oh my god! Oh, yeah, uh, it's pretty bad. I feel terrible now. How bad I made fun of him, <laughs> like <laughs> driving him because I was the one on Monday. I drove him to the clinic. Uh, yeah, and uh, the whole time, don't you know? I was not short of any jokes. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't listen to this, but if you ever do get around to it, Todd, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'll apologize here, not to his face, but I'll apologize here on the show. Um, to some catch up, you and I had not been on the show together for a while because first you were at uh, Padre. You went to yeah. the beach. You had a nice condo. You and your oh, daughter. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Some wonderful beers, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was very jealous of your selection. <laughs> and I didn't realize how good a selection that Specs there in Corpus Christi on your way to the beach has. But apparently it had everything and then some. It had just about any Texas beer that you would care to buy 
And it was it was cool the way Specs does it. I don't know if you've noticed that they they separate the beers by like they have all their Texas beers in one area. They have all the beers from Europe, Mexico, and it makes it nice to to browse. A lot of times people won't put that that kind of thought into how they how they shelve their beers. Um, there was one beer, and it was the one only in Texas. I think I put an Instagram post on it. It's a lager. That was, I would say, out of all of them, that was probably hands down the best one. And that was a brewery in San Antonio. And I wish I knew more about it, but we'll have to. Uh, yeah, it was Freetail, wasn't it? Wasn't it there? Yeah. Lager? Yeah, Freetail is great. I think it was Freetail. I'll have to go back. I saved the can because my sister uses them for planners. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> she's always like, James, make sure the really colorful ones save because she's got a special can opener that cuts the top off. And then she'll bed little plants in. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, you wouldn't, it's hard to think about that, but you see the way she has it in her greenhouse, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. I, no, I like that idea. I uh, am not that creative, believe it or not. I, <laughs> I, I just crunch the cans. And actually on my <laughs> beach trip, so the next week I had pre-recorded an episode with um, – Jason Chalifer from Muntins had a great yeah, time. Yeah, that was a good episode. Jason's by the way. a great he, he needs guy. to go, get on more. I I agree, and and I feel bad because I typecasted him again. I brought a, a question about malt, and I know he that's what he does for a living is sell malt. And so mm-hmm. I, I I I apologize to him. Like next time we have you on, it'll be totally different because he's been homebrewing for a long time. He's oh yeah, a, yeah, very passionate about it. An award winning home brewer. Uh, yep. He has a lot of knowledge. So when you guys are out, like because literally you were on you were on vacation. Todd was uh, working on his rent homes and Joe was just swamped. And so yep. I was lucky that Jason has in the past offered like, hey, if you ever need help, I'd love to come on and help you. And so I pinged him like the day before. I said, hey. I'm taking you up on your offer. Uh, you're going to help me, okay? <laughs> he was like, yeah. "That's cool." He's like, "Yeah, sure, that'd be great." And uh, he did a wonderful job. Got really good feedback. He did do a good job. He, I, I know people. People really enjoyed uh, him, his knowledge, and mm-hmm. uh, we're, I'd love to have him back on. But then I get back in town, and this is the first episodes that we've both been back from vacation. True. Uh, yeah. So, so it's nice to have you on my. It's nice to be here, but I will say this: isn't it amazing how short vacation is? Oh, it, like that? Because uh, I, I was like, you get there, and I don't know about the weather there, but when we got there, it was blistering hot. Oh yeah. And and I thought, well, I'm just going to lay out and enjoy this, make it a real long week, and I woke up and we're back at home. Dude, you're telling me we got to the beach house on a Monday afternoon. And South Padre Island, so it's a five-hour drive only because I was flying down the highway. Uh, <laughs> it's normally like a five-hour, forty-minute drive, but man, I tra- flow of traffic was was favoring me. I loved it. Other people were getting pulled over. I was like, oh, this is my destiny. I'm gonna get to Padre <laughs> South Padre as fast as I've ever, and I and I really did. But we got there uh, early afternoon, and then, like you said before, I knew it. I blinked, and it's t- it's checkout time the weekend. Uh, well, that's true. I, I I always do that when I'm on vacation on any kind of trip. I take it for granted, or or I overthink it. It'll be Monday, and I know we're leaving Saturday. And I'll, on that Monday, I'll be like, "Oh, this is great," but it's just going to end so soon. And I do, I kind of dwell. <laughs> it on, always does. Yeah, and it always just it always does because now look yeah. now now I'm like a, a week past my vacation basically. Um, right. it seems like that was months ago. You know? Exactly. We need to be oh. more like our, our European counterparts in Germany. It seems like they're always on vacation. Oh, yeah, Stefan's on a 14-day right now. So I think this is the second week of his vacation. So <laughs> They're always on Poor vacation. Claudia. She's ha- handling the ship right now. Uh, yeah. I don't envy them when they are gone. Um, so on my beach trip, a lot of people had, had fo- who follow our Homebrew Happy Hour Instagram uh, made it a point that, uh, I, you know, my whole shtick of just Kolsch and only Kolsch held true. I took a case of fru. And cool. Then, and then good I, choice. Oh, oh, it was so good. And then I took a case of Altstadt's Alt, um, mainly because I wanted Alt, and I was still bitter. I was a little bitter about, about you guys <laughs> and the schluss. So I, I've let it go. I'm growing. <laughs> I'm maturing in real time. Uh, you know, when I I'm got up, selfish. Well, that's my crack, man. Oh, oh, that's I don't blame you. That's the thing. I don't blame you. It is that good. And it was sent for y'all. So I get it. Um, <laughs> that, how long did that schlussel even last in your house? I, uh, 
I kegged the first keg in a smaller keg so we could keep it on gas and I could keep it forever. And uh, I didn't check the O-rings on the keg. Oh, no. Don't you tell me yeah. you wasted it. Oh, I had three alt beer glasses of that. And then I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and I smelled that smell. Oh. I opened it up and it had leaked into the cooler. No. Yeah. yeah. Did you? It cr- was dripping. Now, I, I was able to get probably three more glasses. So I had probably six alt glasses out of that uh, nearly gallon and a half, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And, and uh, the other one, I haven't brought myself to open up and transfer. <laughs> Still in the fridge waiting. Because I've got to transfer it because I'm not, if, you, 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 if you're familiar with those cans, you've got, once you open it, you got to drink it or it'll go flat. So we figured out a way of transferring it into a keg and then putting it on gas so that you can keep it for several days. But I, I was so disgusted by the first one that I can't bring myself to open the second one. Oh, I, yeah, I'm sure you're traumatized. Did you have, did you have one single tear just fall? When you- <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty upset. I wasn't. <laughs> Some cuss words. Uh, but I will say that that alt beer that we did when Stefan was here, it turned out really good and uh that's been the saving grace because that's the first thing i do when i get home from work is i have a glass of alt beer the blonde alt that we did the uh the video on the decoction with yeah i uh, I think it turned out extremely well you you segued perfect because i was going to say uh that brew day we shot two videos we did uh your decoction uh, uh, method for for your alt beer, and mm-hmm. then we did a brew day on the Anvil Foundry with Joe, and I yeah. I, I don't know if they've transferred his oatmeal. He he IPA put yet. it in the keg writer today. He's got to carbonate it, but it's it's in the keg and ready to go. He said it smells just like uh, pineapple. Interesting. He said it has a pineapple smell. He it was he used that I don't I always am, I preface this by saying I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but the Kavik yeast is what he used, right? Is it Kavik or right. Kavek? Kavek, okay. I believe is what the, how they say that. So yeah, that's your, he said it had a real good fruity smell. That's your people, right? I mean, in that yeah, yeah, part that's of the Norway. world, yeah. yeah, yeah, the farmhouse ale. I'm looking forward to trying it because uh, it did smell good going into the fermenter. Uh, not yeah. like pineapple, but obviously the yeast hadn't done its work yet. Uh, right. It'll be interesting. And it hadn't been dry hopped yet. And I think Todd dry hopped it, but he just couldn't keg it. So Joe had to go down there and, and keg it. And uh, it's here now in the, in, the, in the brew room. Next time I'm up there, I'm, I'm sure it'll be on tap. I'll have to give it a try. Uh, it is definitely on tap. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, pre- so we actually, if you think about it, We've actually had some fairly good luck on the last few batches of beer. You know, I did that Pilsner, and then I did that uh, Dry Kolsch, and then I did the uh, the Alt beer, the Blonde Alt, and then Joe's got the Kavak, which I've never had one. I'm so excited. I can't wait to try it. And I think all of them were home runs, which yeah. is encouraging for me because, you know, I'd been kind of struggling with – I'd had a, a bad run with Alt beers, and – uh, it's good to good to have that every now and then. It is. We took you to a brewing psychologist. They talked you through it, and you're out <laughs> of the slump. Uh, I, I that I think I was I texted you a dozen times because Monday night, uh, this is post injury, Todd. I still yeah. stay at his barn because I'm too cheap to get a hotel, and they're very. No, I wouldn't go anywhere else. I know they're very nice. kind too. So I I'm at the barn. And I have the, your Pilsner, I have your Blonde Alt, and I have your latest batch of Kolsch all on tap. Todd called it a night at like 7 o'clock. We ate dinner, and Todd was like, I'm hurting. I'm going to die. I got to go to bed. I said, no, right. no problem. I went over to the barn, had, enjoyed myself uh, with a cigar and a bunch of beer. And, dude, I got to tell you, they were all home runs. Let's real quick go over the Blonde Alt because – okay. People were inquisitive about it on our Instagram. The Blonde sure. Alt is uh, a recipe that was born from, I mean, go, go through how it came to be and like the the characteristics of it because more people than not were, you know, I was raving on it. And to be fair, people, mm-hmm. I think sometimes think I'm just a fanboy of you, but the beer you can testify, anyone who drinks it can testify. It is an incredible version of an alt. Just discuss it, it real quick. And it, well, it started out as my alt beer recipe, the one that we took to Homebrew Con. Really good reception with it. Went upstairs, you know, Mr. Know It All, Mr. Beer. I did the kit. 
And we started brewing it, and Todd looks at me, and he says, you know, that's awful light for an alt beer. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, the other one was the same way, you know. And then the more I got to brewing it, and, you know, we did a triple decoction on that, so that caramelizes the sugars, gives a little depth of flavor. And, uh, yeah, I was looking at that thinking, I forgot something. I know I forgot something. So I'm sitting around, and, and I, I get to thinking about something. I obsess about it. And it's usually when I'm in bed at night and I was laying around thinking and it hit me. I didn't put the black malt. I use the Carafa too because it's debittered and it's a little over 400 Lovey Bond. A few ounces of that gives it that color. But it also, there's just a hint of that alt beer, that darker alt beer, alt beer taste, but it doesn't taste like stout. It doesn't, you know, you and I have talked about this. A lot of alt beers, when you get them, commercial ones, it tastes like a light stout, yep. you know. So that was born out of a mistake. So I had forgot to put the black malt in it for the color and a little bit of the character and the flavor. And it turned out actually unique flavor. Dude. I mean, what did you think? I mean, Dude. What was oh, so good. So first off, yes, unique flavor. I would say when you're drinking it, it, it is obviously an alt, but it has like that. Uh, like. It is almost a blend of a Kolsch and an alt, but it, but not really. Like the mouthfeel was very cloud like, like I get with the Kolsch. Uh, right. And it wasn't nearly as sweet as the alt can be. And right. I, I thought it was very pleasant. Also, uh, you know, it may be contextual because it was it was blazing uh, hot. Even even w when I started drinking it at you know, well, it was like six eight p.m. when I started drinking it. Uh, yeah, so that's blazingly hot. Pretty much this time of year. It was perfect though for it. I I. Uh, if I had more adjectives under my belt, I would use them <laughs> to just, just like, it's, it, I think the best thing it, it is to do would be to make it a recipe and let people brew it. Oh, and, absolutely. And then they, yeah. just, they, and by recipe, I mean like we would publish the kit for people mm -hmm. to be able to buy and all grain. Uh, can we do an extract of that version? That'd be kind of difficult, wouldn't it? I think we probably can. I think we probably can. It may not be uh, completely 100% of what what we did there, but I think we could probably get close enough that people would like it. Yeah, this is you know, because you think about it. We would just pull the because you know I've I've changed that recipe. I can't even <laughs> tell you how many times, but um, it would just be a matter of omitting the carafa too in that kit. Then I, you know, I that would be the steeping grains. Oh, good point. That would just yeah. be the steeping grains. So we could right. do it. Yeah. Ah. But see, the thing about it is, is I think the biggest thing that makes a huge difference, like I showed in the video, is that that decoction really adds a depth of flavor that you just can't get without doing it. it you know, I, I agree. And we have a, a question later uh, that actually goes over your decoction. And, yeah, uh, yeah, we will get to that real quick before we get into the questions for the show. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the current uh, label contest that we're doing with StickerU.com. If you go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash contest, you can uh, it'll let you redirect to the official rules. You submit it. It doesn't have to be uh, it doesn't have to be just bottled labels people can submit their growler labels uh ked labels like uh, i've shown you the ked label that we're gonna have yeah. printed for us um your logo of your brewery or any beer you've done it doesn't have to be necessarily a label they're telling me entries are already starting to come in winner for first prize i believe gets a uh, 200 dollars of print uh, worth of printed custom labels uh, oh, wow. th that's a cool. lot of labels and then second place is 175 dollars worth and third place is 125 dollars worth so uh, the judges will be you me and todd so i've been telling people only half joking uh Keep that in mind. Wink, wink. When, if, <laughs> wink, wink, and a nod. <laughs> if, you're, if you're making a brand new label, just keep that in mind. Wink, wink, nod, nod. But yes, go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash contest. Go enter your labels. Uh, we want to see your designs. And I want to give you free stuff because much like I do with Todd's money, when you submit questions and I give you a gift card to Cat Connection or Homebrew Supply, I'm going to do this with Sticker U now. I'm going to give their money away to you. So That's so cool that they're doing that. With yeah, we, we appreciate you guys at StickerU.com. But yeah, homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash Sticker U. So James, I do have two questions. Uh, let's sure. jump right into it. The first question comes from Derek, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Derek wrote, hi there. I'm a very new listener. 
and I also am very new to brewing. New as in I haven't even brewed my first batch yet. One question I have is how do I, how will I know my beer is ready to drink? Is it as easy as tasting it, or is there some method I will do to avoid preemptively tasting it? Follow-up question, is there any danger or harm in drinking it too early? I look forward to your show every week now and hope you will take my question, Derek. That is that is a great beginning question because it, it, is, yeah. it, it can cover a whole lot of things, but I'll let you start off with the basic answers. How's he going to know when it's ready to drink? Well, the easiest, quickest, simplest answer is hydrometer. So just take a gravity reading and any kit that he's going to get, whether it be an in-house kit, there's going to be instructions that tell a starting gravity. And because it's an extract or mini mash kit that he's going to, I'm just assuming he's going to use that. He'll be able to monitor that with a hydrometer in a vessel, which a sample, a hydrometer sample vessel is just a cylinder with a, with a base on it. You fill beer up in that at room temperature if it's not room temperature, you need to get online and, and there's a temperature correcting gauge that you can, or chart that you can, it, it's simple. Just look it up. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But just take uh, test readings of the gravity on the beer. When it hits or gets close to and stays at a certain reading for several days, then you know it's done. Sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes that can be a bad thing. So I would tell you, Derek, Make sure you get your spoon and, and oxygenate that wort really good before you pitch your yeast. That way you have give that yeast every option to grow and eat and consume all the sugars in the batch. But all in all, you should. If you follow those instructions, Derek, you're going to be all right. Yeah, especially just fine. Especially if he's, if he's starting off, I'm making an assumption here. He'll probably be doing an extract batch. Sure. Um, that is a, a great intro into brewing, and it helps you – to, in my opinion, nail your beer and get used to brewing in a controlled environment or, or some more variables are controlled, like the mashing steps and all that. That's controlled sure. for you. Uh, like you said, gravity reading, in my opinion, that is like the de facto, this is mm -hmm. how I know because, oh, my target final gravity is 1010. Right. Uh, so I do this reading 1010. It's ready, you know. Now yep, so you're not always yep. going to be right on the number, but when you're in the ballpark, right? Like, what would you say mm -hmm. plus or minus you have to work with if you're not like if my number was ten ten? What is yeah. a ballpark of like? Well, do I let it? You're going to be a lot of times. It all depends on there's there's a couple of factors: is how well you oxygenated the yeast and how viable and active the yeast that you pitch. Also, you need to make sure and pitch the correct amount. So don't start off with a super high gravity beer because that requires a whole lot more yeast. A lot of times it requires a starter. And I would just say keep it simple, four and a half percent beer kit. And uh, if, if, if it's possible, use some in good quality liquid yeast like Imperial yeast. The reason why I like to use Imperial yeast is uh, they, they ship more viable cells for you. So you know, talking to Owen when we went and took the tour, you know, he's he he said that they work real hard. They actually they they want to they advertise 200 billion sales. But he told us that it's actually more than that in the package. Yep. He wants to make sure that you have a good product and it does what they market it to do. And it does. It's a fantastic. Product. It, Imperial is the beginning brewer's best friend for you. It it'll no. make you shine Be, because of that. Exactly. Um yeah. Yeah, I, I agree that, uh, you know, having a basic beer like a like, I don't know what comes to mind, maybe that true to style Kolsch. Um, yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. You know, that the truth be told, that's a super simple beer to brew. It's got one hop addition. It's uh, fairly low alcohol. You know, it's a four and a half percent beer. Man, you can't go wrong with that. I would I would suggest you try the true to style Kolsch kit. And and uh, get, pick the option for the imperial yeast, uh, Dieter yeast, I believe is what we use. Yes, sir. And uh, and you'll have good luck with it. Follow your instructions. Keep your sanitary uh, practices in place, and, and make sure everything's good, clean, and sanitized. And you'll and, and you'll have good good luck with that. This question came in like five and a half weeks ago, and I already answered him directly and told him I'll probably you know I'm banking it to use in the future. <laughs> but go buy this coal skate, and he has. He's brewed yeah. <laughs> I have to get. I have to get. Well, I say he's brewed it. He bought it. Uh, I yeah. Saw, I saw. They I have to follow up with him. Just uh, maybe have him on the show after he does his first sure. batch. And yeah. Uh, in fact, 
I, I don't know if you've got the same email, but I had a guy email me about our coals. Now, he wanted our true to style recipe, and I don't give that out freely, <laughs> but I did give him guidelines on a coals, a basic coals recipe, because I think he was really concerned about making his own coals. Right. So he did an all grain, his own recipe, and I kind of told him where you need to be on, on grain mix. And uh, he was more of a lager guy. And he came back. I don't know if I forwarded it to if I know. You, I will. Did. You forwarded it to me. Yep. And he was very surprised at how good the beer turned out. He said it was his Total best fan. one yet. Yeah. Yeah. He said he's a huge fan of Cole's style now. Yeah. As he should be. Look, people think <laughs> that, like, I have nothing to gain from pushing Kolsch. I have actually only to lose because of our roots in Dusseldorf and CM Becker. And, yeah. you know, like, uh, I have to hide it from them. Even then, Stefan. You know, I think he called me a girl, and that was about the worst of it. <laughs> I, he said, "Oh yes, uh, Kolsch. Well, it is the women's drink, Josh, but <laughs> which I've been called worse by better, so it's okay." Well, there's nothing wrong with a nice, easy drinking, clean beer. You oh. know, not real busy, not super hoppy. You know, it's not super hard. It doesn't have a three or four hop schedule. Yeah, in, during the brewing process, it's just really fun to brew something simple. That has good results and, and is very drinkable. And balanced. Oh, yeah. it's just, ba- yeah, I, I love it. And I blamed you. I threw you under the bus. I said, James, <laughs> yeah. James is the one who converted me to loggers. And to, like, I'm just, I want a smooth beer now. I, yeah, I don't, I I, too. all the yeah. punching me in the face with pastry stouts or d- double IPAs. I mean, I'll have them, uh, but I don't. Buy- uh, it's just sometimes the busier be- uh, beers are good if you want a glass, but. This time of year when it's hot and you want something refreshing, boy, you can't beat a Coles. No, you can't. And I'm actually really looking forward to opening up some Oktoberfest soon, some Mars. And, yeah. uh, and that's another style that you can decoct to really bring out the – awake the flavors in the kernels of grain. We got another question on that. Don't jump the gun. Uh, <laughs> uh, to wrap up Derek's question, because uh, he had a second part to it that I think is worth addressing, uh, is it uh, – is there – any danger in drinking it too early? No, there, there is no, no da- there's no. no danger, but it'll just, uh, it'll be sweet. <laughs> so if you drink it too sweet or if it has what we call a stuck fermentation, you'll, uh, you'll appreciate the drier beers once you get, get a few down your belt, you know, cause I remember the first beer I made was terrible. The second one was super sweet and uh, just, you'll have that from time to time. But if you follow policy and procedures according to brewing beer, I think you'll be all right. I agree. Derek, thank you so much for submitting the question. Moving on to our last uh, question of the show came from Pete, who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Worth mentioning, nobody's nobody's using the voicemail. I have to play one of these episodes. The voicemails I get now are just people sucking up to me and there's no question at all. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it might be my mother because it's very, like, I, you know, I think she has a bunch of uh, fake numbers. and she, Oh, that Joshua <laughs> sure is my favorite. Y'all keep doing the show. Like, <laughs> If I played them, you wouldn't believe them. But we'll do that. Actually, I will do you that. You worked so hard. Yeah. yeah, that Mr. Burns should just pay him so much. <laughs> uh, anyways, to Pete's question, uh, it is, I just watched your decoction video and love how simple James makes it out to be. In your opinion, besides the alt beer, is there a style I should try this on? Obviously, I am an all-grain brewer, but I figure it's worth asking if you could mimic decoction with when brewing an Etstrat batch. I suspect the answer is no, but you know way more than I do. To clarify for Joshua, you is James. <laughs> People are getting way too comfortable with, with bashing me. I don't like it. Uh, thanks, guys, for doing the show. Talk to you later, Pete. Uh, so I- I'm not even part of this question. James, go ahead. <laughs> well, you have to remember back in the day, that was the only way they brewed beer in Germany. Because that was the only way that they could, they could move their, hold their temps. They knew how to start off at a certain temperature, and then they would just use decoction to get to the next one, the next one, and the next one. So I would be interested, and I haven't tried it, but we ought to decoct a Kolsch and see what happens on that. Oh, dude, that would be a you know? wonderful experiment. Because you can't get any paler. We could even do a Pilsner, just a, a light, just a simple German Pilsner. Uh, you could do that with any beer, I would think. But I think that uh, the depth of flavor... And I keep saying that because you saw a, a good instance of that with the alt, the blonde alt. Yep. 
And it, it just something about when you boil those grains and you caramelize the sugars that are left on the grain. Now, you want to do the grain, not water or wort and grain. So I use, I just use a fine mesh strainer. You know, they, you notice Todd had the perfect size. It was great. And you can get them at Walmart. Stainless steel, they're about that big. They've got little, little uh, legs on it and a handle. And just take some of that into a pot and boil it on the stove. And, and see what happens. I know that there's styles, there's specific styles that they recommend. One is Oktoberfest, or we would actually call that a Marzen. Right. Yeah. And then another one is like a, a Maybach or a Bach beer is decocted. And, uh, and the reason why they do that is, like I said before, the caramelized sugars in those kernels tend to le- uh, add a, a, a flavor that you can't normally get any other way. All beers the same way. And, and it's a super simple, easy. The, what I, what we intended to do on the video is just to give you an example of how simple something like that can be. If you've got a machine that's controlling temps, don't worry about the. We just happened to luck out. Yeah. That hit our next step. I don't know if I showed that to you, but what I boiled that day, we did the video. I, I start out with the alt beer at like 132 degrees, and then I'll go to 144, and then I'll go to like 159, really high on the alpha side but uh we were going that first decoction i think i believe was when we did the started the video correct and i was at the 132 ish mark now when i started boiling the grains i bumped the machine temperature up but it takes it a while so this actually helps it get to the next step so when we we came in and mixed it in on the video i've turned around started in real good and was talking to Stefan and Todd and turned around and looked and it had hit exactly 144 degrees and I didn't measure. No way. I, I didn't. I mean, I know you didn't just, measure. I'm just saying. No, like, yeah, it, it just, it's we, crazy. How do we get They're, so lucky? Like how many brew days have we done with the camera around? And that's the time when things are supposed to go bad. Just speaking yeah, from experience, exactly. like the, the cooler brew video, when, yeah. when the temperature that held in, in, in the mash tun where you're like, oh, yeah, is that, is that 151 or whatever it was supposed to be? I was like, yeah, I think oh we my. were mashing at 150 and it that's held what it was. a whole hour. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I, I, we are a lucky bunch, man. Um, yep. To an, the second part of his question, and we kind of addressed it earlier, but give it if you can a definitive answer. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think it's possible to do decoction when you are doing extract because that mash part's already been done. Is there any kind of you know what uh, you could mimicking? do? You might uh, the steeping grains. Once you do your steeping, normally you're not going to be doing much for the uh, for as far as mashing. Now, technically, there is some uh, starch conversion that takes place. I was able to get that to happen, but I'm anal about that, and I'm always watching the temperature and all that. But I would say this. I would get another pot on the stove next to it, and then once the steeping grains are done doing, like normally 15, 20 minutes, we steep the grains. I think on some of the kits that I've done, I've got 30 minutes. Excuse me. Uh, Take those grains. They're in a bag. Open the bag and put them in a pot, in the pot setting next to the the extract pot and boil it on the stove for a few minutes and then move and then move that back into the into the uh, the bag, the muslin bag for the grains. Right. And then dip that back into the extract. Once you boil the grains on the stove, go ahead and put them back in that bag. Save that bag because you'll have to open it up to dump it into a pot and then boil it for 15 minutes. Put it back in the bag and then and then rinse the bag in the extract water and see what happens. I bet you'll get some flavor out of that. That would be interesting. And I want to go back again, too, to the Kolsch. I think we need to do that just um, – Definitely. Because yep. it gives me an excuse to brew a Kolsch a different way. Or I say me, you brew a Kolsch a different way. And me no, because, I mean, you're an all-grain brewer now. That's In true. fact, uh, when you and your dad brew the next Kolsch, you've already got a, a burner out there, don't you? We do. That's true. Yeah, yeah. multiple. I, and you've already got a pot. Yep. So I would just take a pot out there and have it have a, a turkey fryer burner out there ready to go. And then when you uh, pull some of that out as you're mashing – and do do a step mash on that to see what happens. That would be real cool. You know, yeah, the that next, would be interesting. The next one he wants to do is an IPA. I've been told. Uh, I think you know we he he's not burned out of Kolsch. I think my dad is just a hophead. 
He likes yeah. that, that last yeah. IPA uh, recipe you made for us was like stellar to him. So he, yeah, he, he's, he, he's into that. But you know, it's funny because I was the same way when I first started and, and, and had my first real hoppy beer. It was terrible. But it's weird how you want your your taste buds to get used to that. And there was a time, believe it or not, guys, that's all I brewed was IPAs. Well, your whole online persona was is now it's gearhead, but it was hophead. You've always, <laughs> yeah. obviously, you've always been a gearhead since before I was yeah. born. But you, yeah. I remember because uh, yeah, you told me was it an old Twitter handle or something? Something of yours was hophead, and I know yeah. like Wi-Fi passwords up there have the word hophead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, James, how, how, how the tables turn. It's funny how, you know, you're the same way. Eventually everything goes full circle, but man, I'm all about the balanced beers. They just taste better. Oh yeah. And I actually, but I was trying to do an office joke for us, but I actually did the right quote. It wasn't how the tables turn. Michael Strout says, Oh, how the turn tables. (laughs) That's what I meant to say. Uh, If anyone listening watches the office, you're welcome. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am annoying when someone says anything that can be related to the office. I immediately uh, quote that whole entire scene. <laughs> I, the uh, most awkward 90 seconds of anyone's life is hearing me trying to regurgitate uh, office episodes. But, yeah, my daughter, she watches it now. She's really into it. And that's her pet peeve is daddy uh, quoting the movie, while, the show while she's trying to watch the show. She'll turn around <laughs> and say, dad, I know you know it. Let me watch it. Oh, that's the best. She's such a teenager now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, my kids speak to that. My, mine started school. Is, is she already back at school as well? Uh, next week, next Wednesday. Okay. How exciting, man. Uh, yeah. You know, she t- first year of high school. So. Oh, I forgot. She really, I thought she was 13. She's 14. She's 14. Turned oh. 14 last week. So she's a full on teenager. Oh, James. It's sad. Oh, Jaime. Oh, you're getting so old. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'll pray for you. Uh, <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Pete, Pete, thank you for submitting the question. James, that's all I've got on uh, for this week's episode. I greatly appreciate you stepping oh, you up bet. to the plate. I knew you I knew you would. I missed having you on the show. I hopefully I miss being here. Hopefully next week the three of us will be back on it together because I I have a bunch of questions I've been banking for us to all discuss like like equipment questions I like to give to Todd brewing yeah, so, cer- certain brewing questions I give to you but when questions in in golf both of them uh mm-hmm. is when I'm like oh we're going to do that show all three of us cuz then it'll be ping pong and I'll say something every now and then where people think I'm contributing and <laughs> it'll be great but anyways I do appreciate your time sir and yeah. I will talk to you later And that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, StickerU.com, for supporting our podcast and the homebrewing community. Enter our label contest right now, friend, at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash contest for a chance at winning $200 in printed custom labels. The contest runs now through the end of August. On behalf of James Carlson, Todd Burns, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.